On World News Tonight, this Thursday, John Glenn rockets back into history. Two, two, one. Godspeed, John Glenn. And lift off of Discovery with a crew of six astronaut heroes, one American legend. The most anticipated space flight in years. Tonight, the moment and the mission. ABC News World Headquarters in New York. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. John Glenn is neither the first politician to fly in space nor the first former astronaut to make a comeback. But Glenn made it more exciting today. It wasn't the first time that people had driven down to the Cape and stand on the beach to watch. The shuttle's been up 91 times before. But a lot of people were there today because Glenn was going to fly. That's why the President and Mrs. Clinton were there. And while we have not yet seen John Glenn in space tonight, we know he's up there because we've heard him, as well as his commander. Here are some excerpts. Boy, enjoying the show is right. This is beautiful. The best part is a, do a trite old statement, zero G, and I feel fine. I don't know what happens on down the line, but today is beautiful and great, and Hawaii is just, I just can't even describe it. And people let the record show that... Uh, that John has a smile on his face, and it goes from one ear to the other one, and we haven't been able to remove it yet. Probably stay that way for nine days. So let's go to the Cape now, Cape Canaveral, and pick it up with ABC's Morton Dean. As he went through his pre-launch routine today, Glenn seemed as unruffled and at ease as he was on that morning 36 years ago. He repeatedly smiled his best smile and gave his best combat pilots thumbs up, proving that the right stuff ages well. When he made that first trip, the oldest of his Discovery crewmates was only nine. One wasn't even born yet. Glenn easily squirmed into the middle seat on the shuttle's mid-deck for today's ride into space. Welcome aboard, John Glenn. Roger, thank you much. There were several delays today. Receiving information, there are... Aircraft in the area? Minor problems, including a small plane violating the shuttle's airspace. For John Glenn, another 19 minutes was no big deal. And lift off of Discovery... In a place where there have been many emotional highs, this ranked among the highest. Thanks to the Glenn factor, no one was untouched. Not the people at the Space Center. Not the President and the First Lady who watched from a rooftop here. Not the tens of thousands of residents and tourists who gathered for miles around. We saw him the other time, and this time was just fabulous to know that he was that old and could still do this. But the launch was not perfect. What appears to be a panel was jarred loose and may have hit one of the three main engines. The panel is believed to cover where a drag chute is housed, a chute used when the shuttle lands. NASA said late today the mission would not be affected, but that the problem will be studied further. However, it would take a lot more than that to diminish the echoes of Godspeed, John Glenn, that were still being heard here. Orton Dean, ABC News, Kennedy Space Center, Florida. We heard the event described in a number of ways today, described it ourselves pretty enthusiastically. John Glenn taking a victory lap, said one person. It was like Woodstock for old people, someone else said. More than 3,500 journalists from around the world were on hand for the launch. And sure, more people had their eye on the Cape today than any time in a long time. Here's ABC's Aaron Brown. Nine, it has been a long time since so many Americans of every age, young and old, from New York to L.A., held their breath, crossed their fingers, said a prayer, and watch the marvel that is manned space flight. I think it's great. You know, a guy this old going up there, uh, doing it again, showing everybody what it's like. Uh, it's fantastic. It brought tears to my eyes. I thought it was absolutely wonderful because I have a father his age, and, I, and to have the opportunity for him to go back up into space, it just, I think it's wonderful. That wonderment could be seen and heard in the words of children. I think he's swimming waves to go up in the moon. Many watched in school, some named after another astronaut, Krista McAuliffe, who died in the Challenger 12 years and 66 manned flights ago. I was thrilled seeing it. I think he's, he's going to be an American patriot. Yeah, I want to be just like him, that's why. 
If you were older, it was a flashback. John Glenn kind of represents a hero for the country and a role model for our kids. He did to me. So much technology could have been lost without NASA, you know, being rekindled, if you will, because of John Glenn. And a chance to dream. Well, John's just a little bit older than I am, and I'd be glad to trade places with him. Well, I had always said that I wanted to be the first doctor on the moon to deliver a baby. Yes, there were skeptics. I do feel that NASA did a great job of marketing John Glenn to further their cause and get in the pockets of all Americans. But mostly we heard this. When I saw the whole crowd here clapping, I was clapping along with them. Everybody's one for one moment. Which was very much the feeling 36 years and 120 manned space flights ago. Aaron Brown, ABC News, New York.